In this video, we're looking at product functions. So product functions are functions in which you have two functions and then you product, so multiply them together. And then often we don't have a basic form for this graph. So we have to use different techniques to be able to graph them. So it's fx is equal to gx times hx. So an example could be x squared times log x. So we know how to graph log x, we know how to graph x squared, but we don't have a, a sort of memorized or a general form for x squared times log x that we need to know. So we've already done some functions. So some functions are when you had two functions, so let's say y is equal to gx, but rather than multiply to the, them together, we sum them or add them together. So we have gx plus hx. So it does have some similarities to product functions. However, when it's product functions, we're multiplying and sum, we're adding. So beginning with an example, we have two different equations. So y, fx is equal to e to the power of x and gx is just equal to x. So each of them by themselves, we know how to graph. So the first step is to graph both. So here we have gx is equal to x. So I'll say y is equal to x. And the final result, what we want is y is equal to x times e to the x. Then we graph e to the x. So e to the x will look like that. Then we have y to the e to the x. Now we need to find what the product form is. So firstly, 0 times anything will just equal 0. Example, 0 times 4 is equal to 0. 0 times negative 3 is equal to 0. So what we can see here is we look at this point, and we know that at y is equal to x, at x equals 0, then it, at the x part, or the gx part, is equal to 0. And because of that, the y function, so the, combined, the product function, is also going to be 0. So that's 0 times 0. As here you have e to the 0, which is just 1, but 1 times 0 is obviously going to be 0. Now, what's going to happen to the left? So on the left, we have a negative function, and we have a positive function. That's important when you're looking at the product function, so look at what sign, so if they're positive or negative, and then work out what the result will be. Well, a positive times a negative will give us a negative. So all on the negative x values, we're going to get along the negative y values for the y function, no matter what the magnitudes of the graphs are. So looking at the very far, when x is a very large negative number, we have y is equal to x is quite large, but then y is equal to e to the x is very, very small. And that's because let's say e to the negative 4 is equal to 1 on e to the 4. So it approaches 0 very quickly. So then when you have a very small number times another number, it's going to give you a small number. As this is relatively smaller compared to the large number, this is a straight line, but this is going down more exponentially. So we have the graph there, and that's going to slowly get bigger. And then if you see at these points, this the gradient isn't sort of steep, and then this one sort of more. So then as this is becoming a bit, increasing a bit less, but this one is decreasing more. We can sort of, we get a sort of bump, and then it comes back like that. So, approaches something like this. And then, so that's quite hard to see initially, and especially with these type of graphs. So this is probably a good example, like x to the e to the x, is this relatively common for a product function is to realize that there is a dip there. The way to think about this is that as it's approaching zero, you can see that it will be less. And if you draw it on the CAS, you can see it is quite steep. And then here, the gradient isn't changing as much. And then this one is going down a lot less. Uh, it is constant. However, comparatively, it's much larger. So then even though this is no longer as small of a function. This is a bigger function, a big, bigger relative number. So we're going to get that dip there. 
Then looking on the right side, we see that there's a positive and a positive. So we know that the result is going to be positive as well. So positive times positive is a positive. Then it starts off as zero. What we're going to do is we're going to, it's going to go up very quickly because a number, positive number, large positive number times another large positive number will give us a large positive number as well. Now the reason why this is greater than y is equal to e to the x is because y is equal to x is greater than zero for most of it. Like once it x, let's say it there is x equals or x is equal to one. Below that, there's a fraction. However, greater than that, it's greater than one. So if you have e to the x, whatever value it is, times two or times three, it's obviously going to be a greater number. If it was a fraction, then it would be less. So we have this equation that goes like that and it has an asymptote. So we can see that here is an asymptote at x is equal to zero. As it approaches it, and then it has a dip, then it comes up, and it, you have to show that it is greater than y is equal to x. So you can sort of do this as a rough copy, then you draw it out uh, better, you draw the asymptote, and draw this graph in, and you don't have to worry about drawing the other two functions, which it is a product function of. So another example is if fx is equal to x squared minus 1 and gx is equal to the square root of x. So the first thing we notice is that y is equal to the square root of x times x squared minus 1. Now as it's the square root of x we must see that x has to be greater or equal to 0. And even though xx is defined in all values of x, it doesn't matter because you're times in together. So now, just like the sum function, you have to look at the ranges and domains of, of both, and there are different restrictions. So x has to be greater or equal to 0. Then, if we're drawing those two functions, we have root x there, then we have x squared minus 1, looking like that. So the first point is at 0, obviously, when 1 0, y is going to be 0 as well, so we have 0, 0. Then here we have 0, so we know that at that point it's also going to be 0. So that is 1, 0, because when you can let x squared minus 1 equals 0, so we get that there. And then this is increasing a lot quicker than this. So because of that, we're going to get something like this. Now as it's increasing more, uh, this is a positive and this is negative, so the result's going to be negative. So it's going to increase in magnitude because this is increasing magnitude quicker than this. But eventually it's going to increase a lot less, and so that's why we start to go closer towards zero. And if you weren't sure about which one was quicker, you have to know that this one, realize that this one's going to be quicker initially. And then because it intercepts the x axis again, it has to curve back round. Then we go like this. And it will go up. And it will continue exponentially like that, just like the x squared. However, it will be, if we had a bit more room, we drew, drew the x squared like that. Then it will be uh, sharper or steeper than the x squared. And that's because y is equal to root x is greater than 1 when x let's what x is equal to 1 here so after this point here root x is greater than 1 and because it's greater than 1 this function here times any fun the function when it's greater than 1 is obviously going to be a function which is a value for each of the different x values it will give you a value which is higher than it so it will give you a function y, which is steeper than x squared minus 1. So we get a function that looks like that. So in summary, with the product function, there are three key things. So look when one of the graphs are equal to 0. So when one of the graphs are equal to 0, we know that the y, the product function has to also equal 0. As when 1 is equal to 0, the result is 0. Now you have to check the domains of both functions. These are like some functions in which when there's the restrictions on 1, there's restrictions on y. And thirdly, 
look at when the graphs are positive and negative. So you could be able to tell what Y is. So if one of them is positive, one of them is negative, then the result will be negative. And then if one of them is positive and the other is positive, or if one of them is negative and one of them, the other one is negative as well, then you're going to get a positive function for that part of the graph.